Welcome back to our two-part video on how to do ADA-related work. In this video, I will provide a glimpse into the process of adding and replacing sidewalks to comply with ADA standards. The information in this video is not a substitute for an accredited ADA consultant, but I hope that by the end of this video you understand some of the work we are doing behind the scenes so that public spaces are accessible to everyone. What we are about to go over are some hypothetical examples of common alterations made under the discretion of the professionals here at SSA during ADA jobs. Today, we will be discussing three scenarios where we will use math to determine how to restructure a sidewalk and what parts need replacing. If you have not seen part one and want to see how we obtain our starting measurements, please refer to the link in the description. As you can see here, I have a rough sketch drawn up of what one of these scenarios might look like. Recall that a normal sidewalk must not exceed 5% slope in the direction of travel in order to be compliant. Additionally, we may use ramps as a solution to correct sidewalks which would never exceed 8.3% slope. Ramps require more maintenance and are less cost effective, so it is preferable to have a regular sidewalk whenever possible. However, there are many examples of when they should be used. For our first example, we have three sidewalk sections which are too steep to be a sloped sidewalk. One way of dealing with problems like this is to demo a panel with good slope to give us more room to place correctly sloped panels. We determine the slope of the new panels by adding the slopes of the ones we are demoing and dividing by the number of demoed panels. I call this the averaging method. The resulting effect would look like this. The old sidewalk panels with good slope, like the 0.8% slope panel, are combined with these old panels with bad slope, like these 5% plus panels, to make a good sloped sidewalk. While this is a possible solution to the problem, this scenario does not actually call for the demolition of any panels. Instead, we will simply add some railing and turn this sidewalk into a ramp. We can do this because all panels are less than 8% slope. There is no reason to go through the trouble of demolishing things when we can just go for the much more quick and effective method of installing railing. As a general rule, you want to avoid demolition whenever possible, as it is much better for both us and the client. If it comes down to choosing between a ramp and demolition, choose the ramp. Let's discuss another scenario where we will use math to determine how to change the sidewalk and if demo is necessary. Here we have six panels with excessive slope. As you can see, the left and right panels are turning points in the sidewalk, which we cannot demo without causing extra problems. Notice on the right, I have already calculated the average slope to be 7.8%. There is no way to have a sloped sidewalk with numbers as high as these and so little space to work with. At first, it appears we have no choice but to both demo the existing panels and turn it into a ramp. However, there is a way to avoid both making it a ramp and demolition by looking in the third dimension. As it turns out, there is plenty of room around the sidewalk to add an accessible path right next to it. This gives us enough space to increase the length of the path so the slope does not need to be so steep. We will need to do a little bit of math to figure out just how much sidewalk we need to achieve a slope under 5%. Currently, the length of the existing sidewalk is 30 feet 1.5 inches. That's a 5 foot panel, plus the quarter inch separation between each of the panels, multiplied by the 6 panels we have between the two turns. The slope of each panel is noted here and here. And again, the average slope is 7.8%. The reason we measure the slopes in percent is to make it to where we actually don't need to do any real trigonometry. All we have to know is that the elevation difference between the two ends of the path is equal to the slope that we measured multiplied by the length between the two points. For example, if our measurements are correct, the difference between the values of measurement C and measurement D, that's our elevation difference, should be equal to 7.8% of the length of our sidewalk, which we measured to be 30 feet 1.5 inches. 
I've simplified the measurements to be only in inches here, and turned the percent into a decimal. Using the laser level, we have measured that our elevation difference, that's c minus d, equals 2 feet 4 and a quarter inches. And by doing the math, we determine that the elevation difference is 2 feet 4 and 3 sixteenths inches. That is plenty close enough for the scope of work we are doing here. I have included all the math that we did in the form of an algebraic equation below. But these are just the measurements we already have. Now that we know how to do the math, let's calculate how much sidewalk length we would need to traverse the same elevation difference at a slope of less than 5%. Or, in other words, let's find out how much space we need to use here so that our new sidewalk does not need to be as steep as this one. Now we are solving for length in this equation. The elevation is known and we are deciding that the slope will be 4.8%. This slope should provide a reasonable margin for error during the construction of the new sidewalk. If we know that the length multiplied by the slope equals the elevation, then it stands to reason that the elevation divided by the slope equals the length. So here I've calculated that the length of our new sidewalk can be no less than 48 feet 11 and a half inches. That, divided by the 5 foot quarter inch panel size, tells us that the number of panels we use can be no less than 9.75 panels. We're going to round that up to 10 because only full size panels are being used here and the sidewalk must align properly. As you can see here in blue, I've counted out 10 panels and a landing. Things are looking good, but we are not yet done. The first six will sit quite comfortably here at 4.8% slope. However, in order for all the panels to be the same size, we had to add some distance. And if that extra distance continued at the same slope, the end of the new sidewalk would not meet the end of the old sidewalk. So we have to do a couple more calculations to determine a different slope for the last four panels. This slope is important because without it, the workers will not know how to pour the concrete so that the two sidewalks connect. This is where it gets a bit tricky. At the bottom, you can see that I worked the problem backwards to determine the actual distance required to accommodate 10 5x5 five five sidewalk panels. Then, I reasoned that since all the panels are the same size, I could find the length of the last four panels by multiplying the total distance by 0.4. In essence, I isolated four of the ten panels. You could also determine this at the site by taking a measurement using a tape measure. These panels turned out to be 20.083332 feet long. So this is what our setup looks like. On the side is the equation we need to determine the slope that we are looking for. The only problem is we have no idea what the slope is because we do not know anything about the elevation difference between the landing and either side of the old sidewalk, only that it lies somewhere in between. To illustrate this problem, I have made a diagram depicting all of the variables and all of the numbers we need to know. Our goal is to determine the slope of the last four panels here, and below I have provided the equation needed to solve that, but as I said before, we cannot solve it without knowing the elevation here at E2. Now we are trying to define E2, which we can only do by subtracting the elevation change of the first six panels from the total elevation. But now we need to know E1, which we already know can be found by multiplying the length of the six panels by the slope. Finally, we have gotten to an equation we can solve. This can be solved either of two ways. The first by subtracting the length of the four panels by the total length of the new sidewalk, and the second by multiplying the total length by 0.6. If we've done our math right, both of these methods should yield an answer of 30.124998 feet for the length of the first six panels. Now it is just a matter of working our way back to the original equation by plugging everything in. E1 equals 1.445999904 feet. Here I converted the total length into feet instead of inches so I could get 
point nine zero three seven five zero zero nine six feet as the value for E2. And finally, we get 4.5% as the slope for our last four panels. So in conclusion for this problem, we can create a new accessible route without demolishing any existing panels or installing railing by pouring six new 5x5 five five concrete panels at 4.8% slope, a landing, and four new 5x5 five five concrete panels at 4.5% slope. That was a difficult problem, but it's not the only difficult problem you're likely to encounter when doing ADA work. For our third scenario, we have three steep sidewalk panels, followed by nine flat sidewalk panels. We also have to consider the fact that there are buildings on either side of the sidewalk, so there is no way to make an alternative path. What we see here is what we've got to work with. It's clear that we're going to need to demolish these panels to create a compliant path, but how much of it do we need to demo, and can we make it a sloped sidewalk, or does it have to be a ramp? If we start by calculating the average slope, we can determine that replacing the entire length of the sidewalk would give us a slope of 3.3%. But it's not that easy. We should try to demo as few panels as we can to create a sloped sidewalk. We can still use the average slope, however, to calculate the elevation we are going to be working with. Here, I determined that the length of a panel times the 12 panels on the path equals 723 inches which is then multiplied by our average slope to get a total elevation of 23.859 inches. What I want to know now is, what is the minimum number of panels we will have to demo to allow for a sloped sidewalk? Here, you can see the problem being worked backwards to determine the length we will need to traverse 23.859 inches. Add a slope of 5%, and then I divided that by the normal panel length to get the minimum number of panels we will need to demo, which turns out to be 7.92 panels. It's at this point that we encounter a similar problem to the one that we had in the last scenario. For this, I have also developed a visual representation. At the top, you can see what happened to our sidewalk when we took the average slope. This is what it would look like if we remade the whole thing at 3.3% slope. Below, you can see where we currently are. We figured out roughly where the sidewalk would be if we rebuilt 7.92 panels at 5% slope. But unfortunately, these last four panels have a very small slope and we only accounted for the first eight panels to have a slope that meets the elevation of the last panel. We will have to set up more problems based on this very thin triangle right here so that our new sidewalk is not dipping into the ground like it is here. And eventually, we should end up with a result very similar to this blue sidewalk at the bottom. For a better illustration of the two triangles we are dealing with, I have also provided this graphic. As you can see, the current length and slope of the sidewalk put us in a weird position separate from the other panels. Our next equations will focus on moving this triangle up to the right elevation and to the right so it is connecting with the other one, as illustrated here. Going back to the math, we now need to focus on the last four panels so we can get a correct elevation for the first eight. The length of four panels times the slope of 0.1% gives us an elevation of 0.241 inches, which I went ahead and subtracted from our total elevation. Using the new elevation in this next equation is what's going to move the bottom of our triangle up. Now let's get the triangles to connect. We will do this by accounting for the full eight panels and working forwards again. The slope at which the length of the eight panels will have to be in order to traverse one foot eleven and five eighths inches of elevation equals 4.9 percent. In summary, we can create an ADA compliant sloped sidewalk 
by only demoing the first eight panels and replacing them with new panels at 4.9% slope. In conclusion, all three of these scenarios require us to do important math that not only solved the problem, but solved it in the most efficient and inexpensive way possible. Knowing how to derive solutions from existing site conditions is an important part of ADA work. Of course, this is not all there is to know about ADA work. Most situations have additional factors like building entrances, underground plumbing, and clients' preferences to consider. When ADA work is necessary, it is always best to contact a qualified ADA consultant who is knowledgeable about all parts of the job, including code compliance. We at SSA Architecture are skilled at ADA consulting, site planning, and any other architectural work you may need. And that, of course, includes mathematics. If you need quality ADA work done, please feel free to contact us. And if you're still curious about how we work with sidewalks, check out our video on how we take measurements. Link in the description.